हेलो दिस इज क्वालिटी फूड सेफ्टी वन जीरो वन एंड अवर हेड्स ऑफ जर्नी कंटिन्यूज टूडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट करेक्टिव एक्शन करेक्टिव एक्शन आर प्रिंसिपल नंबर फाइव एंड स्टेप नंबर टेन इन द हैसअप कोडेक्स लॉजिक सीक्वेंस सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट So in this video, we will be defining what is corrective action in regards to the HACCP and HACCP uh, codex logic uh, sequence. Uh, in this regard, what is corrective action? Then we will talk about different levels of corrective actions and give you some examples for them as well. And also briefly, we will touch on traceability and recall, uh, which is in itself a pretty detailed topic. But here we will discuss because it's one of the major corrective actions which can happen in regards to a HACCP issue. Uh, or has a uh, ccp violation so this is the full compass of today's video it will be a short video so uh, let's continue with the uh, definition of corrective actions in has a any action taken as a result of ccp violation to rectify this issue is a corrective action or as a uh, it's called as a corrective action so if we deconstruct this definition basically it sh- uh, says to us that Uh, any action taken uh, when the ccp is not under control to rectify this issue is a corrective action so this is important to uh, understand so after the definition now let's talk about the levels of corrective action there are two different levels of corrective action with regards to hasap one is called as the immediate corrective action or you can say uh, short term corrective action which has to be taken instantly or as soon as possible to make sure that the affected product does not go to the consumer for example uh, let's suppose that there was a metal detector uh, which was on a line and the product was going through the metal detector and during the routine ccp uh, analysis or analysis of monitoring during the routine monitoring check of that metal detector it was found out that the metal detector is not working properly and as a result there might be a case that metals have passed through it uh, along with the product now this is a ccp violation this is a uh, this shows that the ccp is out of control and immediately what we need to do is to make sure that whatever product has been passed through this metal detector since the last successful check has to be stopped and all those product have to be re uh checked through another metal letter or if this metal letter becomes recalibrated through this same metal letter we can check it so this is called as a immediate short corrective action where the product has been secured and the affected product will not go to the consumer that is the first type of corrective action second type of corrective action will be a long term corrective action where you need to do a more detailed investigation to make sure that this thing never repeats itself or the root cause of the problem as is addressed as a result uh, this is not a uh, routine uh, thing which keeps on happening that the uh, process becomes or ccp becomes out of control so that is the second level of corrective action which is a long term corrective action so in taking the same example of metal detector after making sure that the metal detector is recalibrated and the product is safe then we will do a more detailed analysis <clears throat> maybe we need to call the maintenance team or the vendor uh in some cases if the uh, problem is not getting fixed through a localized man- maintenance team to understand that why this metal letter becomes out of calibration and why it is allowing a certain type of metal to go through so for this that this or this kind of corrective action is called as a long term corrective action let me give you a few more examples right so one more example can be a example of a hotel industry where the hot holding step is there and as you know that the rule for hot holding is that the food temperature should remain above 60 degrees celsius uh, during the holding uh, session in the holding cabinet and for that there are some prerequisites that the hot holding cabinet should be preheated before putting the food there and the check should happen uh, on a hourly basis like for example mostly hotels do a hourly check in this regards so let's let's give you uh, this detail uh, to ex- explain the example so there is a hot holding step in the hotel industry after cooking the food the food is kept in a hot holding cabinet which is preheated and as per this example the check in the uh, hot holding stage is hourly so every hour somebody will go and check the temperature of the food and as long as the food is above 60 degrees celsius we have nothing to worry about we are in compliance to our ccp critical limit 
So the first hour passed and the chef checked the temperature. It is above 60 degrees Celsius. There is nothing to worry about. At the end of the second hour, uh, the chef came and checked the temperature and uh, the temperature has fallen down uh, below uh, 55 degrees Celsius. So let's suppose 54 degrees Celsius. Now this is a violation. What has to happen now? The immediate corrective action in this regards is that this food is already now in danger zone. So the rule as per the a lot of municipalities and the legal rule is that when the food or hot food comes in the danger zone, there are two hours to consume it. So now the first step is to consume this food within two hours. So we will assume that one hour has already been passed because the last successful reading was one hour ago. So one hour has passed. Now you have only one hour within one hour consume the food. If that can happen, that's perfect. Otherwise, the second option is, which is allowed in a lot of uh, legal uh, framework as well, that you can reheat the food and consume it after reheating. But in some cases in, or in some municipalities or some legal framework, it is not allowed to reheat the food. So you have to look at your localized uh, regulation from the uh, food department. So in, a, in either case, reheating allowed or not allowed, uh, you have to look at that uh, part. But one hour is the window. Within one hour, consume the food. That's uh, no well-known fact uh, all around the globe. So this is the corrective action for the food. If the food is not consumed in one hour, then either you have to discard the food or in some cases, as I said, you can reheat the food as well. That is done for the immediate corrective action. Now let's look at the long-term corrective action or the more detailed corrective action. In that regards, now you have to call the maintenance team to investigate that why did the food temperature went down Okay, although it was in the uh, hot holding cabinet, the temperature of the hot holding cabinet was set perfectly, then why still the food temperature went down? So then the uh, maintenance team might tell you, yeah, there's a problem in the heating element of the hot, hot holding cabinet. That might be a case. Or they might say, no, the hot holding cabinet is working properly. The calibration is done properly. Then you have to look at the other factors. For example, that there was maybe cold food put inside the same cabinet, which affected the temperature of the hot food. Or maybe the hot holding cabinet was not turned on or preheated properly. That might also affect this operation. So there are multiple, uh, you know, uh, scenarios which can happen. And for that, you need to do a thorough investigation to find out uh, the issue and fix it once and for all, do a root cause analysis and do the uh, solution of that problem once and for all so that that doesn't repeat itself. So that is another example of a corrective action. So after discussing these examples, let me summarize for you uh, that what should be done in a corrective action stage of HACCP. So a corrective action should specify in your HACCP manual that what is the immediate action to be taken. Then whether the product should be sold or not sold, uh, should we stop the production overall? Who we need to inform? Do we need to inform the supervisor or the manager or the factory manager or the executive chef? Who should we inform? Who will deal with this affected product? What are the actions to be taken? When can we restart the, the production or the sales? And who has the authority to release that uh, order that yes, now restart the uh, the production of the sales, who will conduct the investigation and how it will be conducted. And uh, finally, uh, you know, uh, what are the documentary evidence which is required for this evidence as well. All these things should be part of the corrective action procedure. Along with that, uh, just to summarize, what are the options for dealing with the product, affected product. So we can do a reprocessing of the product in some cases. Uh, in some cases, uh, we can also uh, use the product in a less sensitive situation. So let's suppose uh, if the uh, violation is not very sensitive, but it cannot be used now, we can use it in a less sensitive product. Use immediately as I uh, said the example uh, of the hot holding that uh, now the hot holding violation has happened. The food is high risk. You can use it immediately within one hour. Uh, in some cases, we also destroy the product. So all these are options to uh, handle the affected product. Now that is all for the corrective action stage of HACCP. Now I will touch on the last part of this video, which is traceability and recall. Although traceability and recall are by itself a separate topic, which we will uh, talk about in our prerequisite uh, topics, which uh, after the HACCP series, we'll uh, start making videos about them. So, but to just to explain to you, traceability is basically the system which 
is maintained in food manufacturing companies or food establishment to make sure that at each stage we have a trace of our product and ingredients. So we would know that if a certain product is affected or has a CCP violation, this product has gone through which stages and at each stage what was the traceability and what ingredients were included in this product uh, altogether. So that is this whole system is called as traceability. This system is very very crucial to uh, you know uh, do the proper corrective action in some cases and also in recall. Now recall is a separate system altogether in this in the form of uh, or in the subject of recall we call back the product uh, from the market or uh, from the distributor uh, after a few days. So let's suppose we manufacture a product today, the product is uh, looks okay, there is no violation reported right now and it went for testing uh, in laboratory and the laboratory result will come after a few days and as a result of that uh, laboratory test, we found out there is a, still a problem in the product, there might be some microorganisms or some chemical contamination and now we need to recall the product. So this is called as a recall. Uh, these are very, very serious uh, issues in food industry and if you search only on Google on a yearly basis, millions and millions of dollars are wasted in recalls because the food industry is not taking uh, the, the HACCP seriously and they are not being proactive enough to make sure that the HACCP problems are uh, rectified before dispatching. So this is, uh, our, as I said, a very detailed topic and we'll make a separate video about it. Uh, that's it for today's video. Uh, this covers our topic of corrective action. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about uh, verification, validation and review. This is our uh, next step of HACCP Codex Logic Sequence. See you in the next one. Do remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video and share the content to everybody. Thank you.